Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about two flower festivals or the flower festivals from St. Lucia. I'm very excited about this series of videos that we're going to be doing today because they're a little bit longer than the regular videos because this is such a historic and monumental, um, how would I call it? societies and festivals which are only found in the island of St. Lucia and nowhere else. So I am very excited about them. They're called the La Wars and the La Marguerite. La Wars for the rose and La Marguerite for the daisy or the Marguerite flower. So let's have a look at this. La Wars and La Marguerite. The unique flower festivals of St. Lucia. When I started off this series, my idea was to look at unique things from the Creole culture of St. Lucia, this tiny island between the islands of St. Vincent and Martinique and near Barbados in the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic, bordering the Atlantic Ocean as well, on one side. And uh, I'm going to use those ideas coming out of this Creole culture and trying to understand their origins and why and how they came about. So we're dealing with the La Wars and the La Marguerite today. Flower festivals of St. Lucia. Most likely they started off as secret societies during the Enlightenment period, associated with Europe's philosophers, or the philosophical thought, people like Kant, Voltaire, um, Rousseau, Jacques Rousseau, um, Hume, Hobbes, and so forth, Reed, Montesquieu, and so many more that can be named. But you can look at the Age of Enlightenment and the philosophers associated with this. So, the societies, or the in Creole called the Society of St. Lucia, of La Rose and La Marguerite, are two very historic associations. La Rose for the Rose, La Marguerite for the Marguerite flower from the Daisy family. The names La Wars and La Marguerite are from the local Creole language, or what we say Creole. Each society holds a yearly festival, La Wars for the Rose on August 30th, and La Marguerite for the Marguerite celebrated the festival on October the 17th every year. This flower festival is specifically unique, like I said, to the island of St. Lucia. Preparation for the yearly festival begins several months before the actual feast day. Each group holds what is known as seances. Now, you may be familiar with the word seances, so you can also look it up and get a background of the type of idea. But in this case, the seances consist of all night singing and dancing sessions where drinks are sold and games are played. And these are done to raise funds for the big day celebration, which is called the Grand Fete. So before the celebration days of La Wars and Marguerite, they hold seances to raise money. Both societies have a formal hierarchical structure which reflects the socio-economical structure of colonial society. The society during the Enlightenment period, most likely. Each society has a king, a queen, as well as princes and princesses, and many other symbolic legal, military, and professional rules, such as judges, policemen, nurses, soldiers, and doctors. On the actual day of the festival, all members of the society dressed in the finery of their colors, blue and red, blue for La Marguerite, red for La Rose, and they parade to the church for a service, then parade through the streets returning back home after the church service for the feasting at the Grand Fete or what is a Grand Hall. Now, growing up, my aunt used to have a Grand Hall and my mom used to be a nurse in the La Rose group. So, the Flower Society depict an intense rivalry, sometimes between communities. Probably the community of Miko or Monripo would be one group, and then there would be another group from Choiselle, St. Lucia. We know that the St. Lucian Society has split in affiliation, like I said, from one group, so we will expand on this rivalry and try and figure out why possibly rivalry came about. Now, these um, flower festivals reflect a very deep significance to St. Lucian culture when you think about it and you look into it. And the peoples and the history being associated with this flower festival which has lasted up to a day like today and most likely starting off from the a secret society during the Enlightenment period is quite interesting. 
So because of the nature they are most of the they being secretive society, it is much is not really known about them, right? So we're gonna be digging into it and trying and figure out what meanings could have could these things have and what could have prompted them to start off and why. So one idea is that the societies originated in the time of slavery as cooperative work groups created for mutual support and assistance in time of trouble. These groups were similar to the Dokpwe of the Dahomis out of Africa and the Kumbete of Haiti. They also had a great deal in common with the famed Egbe's of the Yoruba people. So we're looking at an African slant of societies and groups and these were ideas from an African perspective. But one can also say that the two societies were partly inspired by two mystic orders, Rosicrucianism and Freemasonry. Now, they were active at the time of the philosophers in Europe. Like I said, Voltaire, Immanuel Kant, Freemasonry and, Rosic and Rosicrucianism, an order of the Rose, was quite active during the Enlightenment period for people having secret societies to discuss ideas which would probably have gotten their head cut off or was not mainstream at the time, or was against the church or against ruling monarchies. So these connections are depicted, um, for example, by uh, somebody known, a uh, very famous artist, Dunson St. Omer of St. Lucia, where he depicts the Holy Trinity to express the flower festivals in a painting. And in that painting, he puts Osiris, Horus, and Isis, right, as uh, the Trinity. So the original, he didn't go with the church Trinity, but he used the Pharaonic idea of the Trinity of the Mother, the Father, and the Son. Check it out. You also know that there are saints associated with the celebrations. There's a saint for St. Marguerite and a saint association with the um, St. Rose. So these are the saints associated with the two flower festivals. The saint for La Rose is St. Rose of Lima, Spanish Santa Rosa de Lima, original name Isabel Flores de Oliva, born in Lima, Peru. The first person born in the Western Hemisphere to be canonized by the Roman Catholic Church. She is the patron saint of Peru and all of South America, the Indies, and the Philippines. It is also noticeable that the Rose Society wears red colors of the rose, right? Like the rose, which is also the color of the English red coat soldiers, the red cross on the English flag. So it could be that the societies at the time were supporting monarchy or somebody who was um, trying to get the throne from the sitting king or they could be supporting the ideas of the Roman Catholic Church or possibly Anglicanism and probably Protestantism and not or not but there were many ideas during the philosophical time even moving away from the ancient regime or the rule of monarchy into republicanism that those ideas being circulated which were very dangerous to discuss out in open so you could see the rise of secret societies so for the saint for the La Marguerite is Saint Margaret Mary Alcock and uh, she was a French Catholic visitation nun and mystic who promoted devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus in its modern form. The celebration of the Feast of the Sacred Heart, Act of Consecration and the Act of Reparation are associated to Saint Margaret Mary Alcock. The Detente Bala amulet used by the Spanish soldiers is based and derived from the Alcock emblem. The Marguerite Festival patrons, like patrons, like I said, the Marguerite Festival patrons wear blue and the color of the French blue coats, for example. The French blue coat guards or the elite infantry regiment of the French Royal Army used to wear blue or they still wear blue, the depiction of it now, right? Now, during that time, they formed a constrained part of the military household of the King of France under the ancient regime. The, the royalty, they were the guards for the royalty. We spoke about the ancient regime in a video called Orleans and also one about Choiseul. So the French guards were located in Paris during the Enlightenment period and during the time of the monarchy and played a major part in the French Revolution as most of the guardsmen defected to the revolutionary cause and ensured the collapse of the absolute monarchy of France. So they were supporting the republicanism idea and movement away from monarchy. French guard led to the storming of the Bastille and formed the cadre for the national God. Some say, same reasoning as for the Rosicrucian order or for the La Rose or the Rose Flower. 
different ideas being debated you can't do it in public so you have a society called la marguerite being formed under the blue colors and having different ideas so we're not to show exactly who they supported who they didn't but we do know many things was going on during that time so we will look at uh, more of this as we move on and uh, right now this is the first part of it and we're going to be seeing you for the second part as we move on see you soon